I love living in the UK. I love the humour, the people and the weather. But our country, like so many around the world, faces huge challenges when it comes to poverty, injustice and caring for the world around us. We're living in a time where the gap between the rich and the poor is greater than ever. We're facing a climate crisis. Homelessness has been on the rise in the UK for the last five years. One in five women in the UK have experienced domestic abuse in their own homes over the last year. The pandemic has made some of these issues even worse. Josh and I want to explore whether the church, Christians and faith organisations are making any difference and doing anything to help people affected by these issues. My name's Governor B. I'm a rapper, author and broadcaster. I'm also a Christian. Many people think that Christianity is boring, untrue and irrelevant. But I'm going on a journey around the UK to discover whether there are stories where the church, Christianity and faith are making a difference in people's lives. I'm taking my mate Josh and we're planning to have a lot of fun on the way. As we ask, is God dead? Josh is in London meeting Jen Costa, the founder of Rubies in the Rubble, an organisation that is one of the pioneering voices in food sustainability. They're picking up some bits for breakfast. Hopefully Josh won't be cooking. Um, tell me a bit about Rubies in the Rubble. What, what is it? Um, essentially, it's a condiments brand, but we make everything. So we make chutneys, relishes, plant-based mayos, ketchups, but all from fruit and veg that would otherwise be discarded, often for being just the wrong size, shape, color, or it might be that there's a supply and demand imbalance. We've got this amazing planet and this wonderful earth that we should be looking after. And we've got this responsibility to, to guardian what we've got. Um, and I started researching food waste, and I just couldn't believe that while so many go without, we're wasting a third of what we produce. Yeah. You doing all right there, Josh? Yeah, I've, I've squished one off. And That's all right. Sorry, right. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, Jen, what can, we, what can we do to help people like me who are oblivious to so much? Um, I think it starts with seeing food as something that you've, you should cherish and it's natural. So I think um, my main principles are eat local, try and eat in season, and support small brands. Does your faith play a part in, in terms of the heart behind Rubies in the Rubble? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, when I started, so I was working in a hedge fund before I started Rubies, and I was 25, had a pretty solid job. And I remember sort of hearing, like, you know, God is always with you. He's put things on your heart that you should be passionate about, and, things, and he'll never leave you, and he's got the best plans for you. And those little things, when I was having the ideas of Rubies in the Rubble, like, to just give you that confidence of like, yeah, life's far too short to carry on for something that's either the fear of failure mm -hmm. um, or this fear of like, I'm in here for a nice comfy job. So it was a really, um, it was a really amazing boost having that faith to just, just go for it and mm -hmm. go for something that I was super passionate about. Right, let's grab those tomatoes. Oh, I can't oh. believe how great these bottles look. These tomatoes are perfectly chopped. Do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. There you go, Mum. Told you I could do it. <laughs> um, Jen, as Christians, what responsibility do we have to look after our planet? I, I, I mean, I, I think God puts passions on everyone's heart. And my mm -hmm. big passion is as Christians, we've got this incredible creation. It's God's creation. Like everything that we have is yeah. his. Um, and we've got the responsibility to look after that and really cherish it and... Um, yeah, that's where I get really excited by it. We've got this wonderful world that we live in. Let's, you know, let's, we, we owe it and we've got this responsibility to God to like, mm. let, let's make sure his creation, we steward and do well. Yeah, brilliant. I had no idea that food waste was such a huge problem or had such a big impact on the environment. I know Josh is feeling bad about those yogurts he's been chucking away, but all of us have a role to play in protecting our planet. It's inspiring to see how each one of us can make a difference. I've caught up with Josh and we're heading down to Brighton to visit an organisation called Bramber Bakehouse, an award-winning bakery that supports women survivors of Hello. human trafficking. Nice Post-Covid greeting of trust. Nice Martha, the head baker, is teaching me and Josh to make a decent Victoria sponge. I'm not sure what it is or what it's meant to look like, 
but I'm confident mine will be better than Josh's. It's already in the big bowl. Add the butter All to the it. sugar. All the butter. And this is sugar in this bowl here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm just making sure you knew that. Should have checked that. <laughs> <laughs> Get on, mate. All right. <laughs> 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 Perfection, sir. Martha, do you know, like, I'm a rapper and my rap name's Governor B. And a lot of people don't ask what the B stands for. It's actually <laughs> Baker. Finally. Yeah. <sighs> I'm so stressed. <laughs> Hold, put one egg in first. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Some yeah. would say it's a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> So all in his garnet and hips. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so what is Rambo Bakehouse? So we work with women who have previously been trafficked or are victims of modern slavery. Um, and we teach them to bake um, loads of different things from like flapjacks and brownies all the way through to like pastry and sort of bread skills. We work with them to develop their confidence skills. Uh, we look at well-being, importance of looking after yourself. That's amazing. Mm. You said about the women that you reach out, like the ladies and the women that you reach out to. How do you like reach them, or do they like do they come to you? So I remember when we first went out to get applications in, and we we just didn't have any applicants. And yeah. I was working in central London at the time, and I got on the tube. At, I was getting on the tube at Holborn, and I just said, God, like where are all these people that we feel like we should be impacting and they're not coming? Mm. So I prayed about it at Holborn, got off at St Paul's, had seven applications in wow. my inbox yeah. from one safe house, like, can we come on the programme? And that was our first cohort, wasn't yeah. it? Now what drives me in particular, seeing these women come in every week, is actually the, the system is flawed. You know, it's mm. not designed for the immigrant. It's not designed for the survivor of human trafficking. What do you think the... Like the outcome is like it's amazing to hear like the work you do with the women. But what's your hope for the women after they've kind of been through Brown Bar? It's different for everybody, but ultimately it's about building their confidence and seeing them live independent lives that are separate from what they've been through before. And your past doesn't define your future; it's just moving mm. through that into something that's much better than what's gone before. Mm. We would love to introduce you to somebody that's been through that journey and have come out the other side. Before that, our cakes are going in the oven and we're heading out to enjoy some of the sights of Brighton. Walking friend. We couldn't come to Brighton without checking out the pier. And what a perfect opportunity for me to take Josh on some rides. Yeah. Even though he loves it. Whatever. Such a good friend. Oh really? <laughs> Back to decorate our cakes. Oh. Can't wait mm -hmm. to get my Star Baker badge and that Hollywood handshake. Great. That's it. That's a good trick. Oh, it just falls off. That's good. Oh, it just falls off. That's good. <laughs> oh, my days. Blood. Oh, camera. Look at this, fam. Are you mad? Are you actually mad? If you walked into a shop and someone gave you that, you'd be gassed. Come, now, come, seriously, come. Like, I'm gassed, I can't lie, sorry. My professionalism went out the window. This is the best thing I've ever done in my life. Look at that. On the inside, that's actually cooked. It's good. It's really it's good. Sorry, Are you... <laughs> that's not... <laughs> is that not sick? Yeah, yeah it's great. It's really Thank good. you. Look at that. That's me. I did that. Oh, this, is, this is not any food. This <laughs> is around the baker. Yeah. 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 It makes everything interesting. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> She's in it. Yeah. I mean, it's snowing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're chatting to Chioma. That's not her real name, and we can't show her identity. But we wanted to hear her story of attending the Bramber Bakehouse Cookery Program to find out what difference it made to her. 
Chioma is a survivor of human trafficking and was brought to this country as a child. Tell us a bit about your story and how you ended up in the UK. Um, okay, so my story started as a child. I was told by my father that we would um, come to the UK to stay with my stepmother. So by the time I was 12, we had come here and um, my father didn't come with us. We had traveled by ourselves, uh, my sister, and then we met this lady when we got here. But um, on getting here, it was totally different. It wasn't a family setting that we had hoped for. And it was funny because when we got to the house, she had a husband living in the house as well. So it was a whole different family, like completely. The worst aspect of it really was the family time when everyone's at dinner and everyone's in the living room and then the doors just close <laughs> right in your face, like back to your room, you're not welcome in this space. So. Forgive my naivety. I think, and I think it's important, like you said, when you first went to uni, you wanted to kind of shine a light on, you know, the victims and, and what trafficking is and, and how it affects people. One of the questions that I ask from a place of really knowing nothing about it is, like why? What what was in it for this lady? And it was years later, after escaping, you know, talking to authorities and lawyers and the NRM, that we realised that such words actually exist, which was child servitude. I mean, all these years, we never, we never knew that he existed. When I got to the supported accommodation, I realised that there were about at least five ladies from the same area that I was wow. at in South London at the same period. Wow. Like, literally, like, buildings apart. Until um, I found the NRM, or the NRM found me <laughs> in 2017, and that's when things started to change and I was placed into her supported accommodation and that's where um, I met the ladies from Bramber and yeah, so. What's so interesting is when you <laughs> just got to the ladies from Bramber, your face just lit up. Oh yes. You know. How did you find out about Bramber and why did you decide to apply? Um, at the supported accommodation, they do try to give um, we survivors supports that we need. And then my caseworker came to me and said, there's a project going on with the Bramber house, if I'd be interested. And I'm like, at the time, I really didn't <laughs> want to do anything. Like, I've really given up. I really had given up. And I said, well, it wouldn't hurt. I mean, something to do just to get out of the mm. accommodation. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I mean, my situation, my trafficking, my child servitude started from a woman that I looked up to as a mother. And then to see that other women are out there trying to help women like me, wow. you know, that gave me something to hold on to. Like, I would like to do something, well, I wouldn't say be like them, but they, you know, they inspired me to want to do more with my life. So without the help of this woman from the Bramba house, I don't think I would be here. Wow. Yeah because you do need people that are ready to push you, to support you, to tell you that it is well. That's incredible. And I think it's so brave that, you know, you've used the extreme pain that you've, you've gone through in life and, and added purpose to that. And now you're, you're helping others. And, you know, we live in a world that seems quite divided and full of patriotism and racism and sexism and that kind of stuff. And hearing your story is just a reminder for me that we all need to try our best to be as inclusive as possible and, and empathetic as possible. Organisations like Bramber Bakehouse are making a huge difference to people's lives all over the country. Seeing faith and action like this is such an inspiration and reminds me that following Jesus is about so much more than going to church on a Sunday. It's about practical action and doing what we can to help those around us. And finally, we're doing a taste test to see whose cake is the best. <laughs> Might be a little bit too cakey, battery. Mm. <gasps>
Thank you very much. Thank you. He got the handshake. Everyone else claps then, don't they? This is emotional, actually. Well done, man. That's right, your party. Thank you, brother. That's mm. great. Uh, you shouldn't, you're not cutting it right, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you're meant to use an unsolid knife. I mean, everyone knows how to bake, but everyone knows how to cut. It's actually going to go. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that hurt her to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what is your deal? <laughs> oh, really good. Going. Really good. Really good. Yeah, really good. Shut up, seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Really good. Really good. You're really good at baking. Mm. Certainly, I'm baking a cake at the moment. Oh, mate, that's okay. Cake. Just across town in Brighton is a church called St. Peter's. We're meeting Sam Coates, who runs Safe Haven, a weekly drop in for men and women in the street community and a meal on Saturday nights. Hey there, Sam, you all right? Hey, good to see you. Peter. Thank you very much. Are you having a good day? Oh, having such a good day. Thanks so much for coming. Nice to meet you. Thank okay. you for showing us around. Oh, come on in. Can we be helpful at all tonight? You can certainly be on team, Josh, yeah. In fact, I've got a great job for you. You can be alongside our chef tonight. Oh, brilliant. Yes, yeah, let's in do the it. kitchen. Wow, yeah. let's do it. chef definitely going to be there, otherwise everyone will end up on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to look out. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a brilliant woman for you to meet as well, oh, Isaac. Amazing. So, Can't wait. Should we go in? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. After yeah. you. So, Josh, we're going to leave you here. Go straight through to the kitchen and let's go through to the church. <laughs> Gary. How Gosh, are you? you'd like to help. I'd love to I'm help. An apron for you. Amazing, thank you so much. How can I be helpful? Hey mate, you okay? Good, I'm yeah. Josh. Hi I'm Margie. Nice I'm to meet you. you. Where am I being useful? Round here. Wash up here. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Sam is introducing me to Alexandra. She was a guest at Safe Haven a few years ago, and I want to hear her story. You've got such an incredible story and you talked about how you were heavily involved in drugs and then you come into this place where people like Sam are showing you a lot of love. How did that feel? It was so weird. But people just loved me and, and I started to open up and trust people. And... So I know how you know, Safe Haven has made you feel and how it's helped transform your life. But what actually happens when you walk in? So, you know, that take me back to that first Saturday night. Coming through the door and initially I just wanted to be fed. I wanted a hot meal and it was a regular, so that's what I was doing and it was free. So that's, that's how... That's it, a good enough reason to be fair. Yeah, be and the, the food was that. really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary's amazing, isn't he? <laughs> Josh is the, finding that out. The food was always really good and... Uh, like, I'm not alone. There's people that are the same as me that come here and, and I felt connected. And, and, and something about this being here, the continuity, the consistency. Sitting around a table, it started to give me hope. And then you just want to give that to somebody else. And that's what it's all about for me, just. I'm quite interested to know what the reaction was of your family. Because yeah. obviously they know you super well yeah. and you've come home and they've seen this kind of gradual change and you're moving in the right direction what did they have to say about that honestly they laughed at me <laughs> <laughs> they were like she's fine god <laughs> but i found it quite endearing i was just like well watch this space because i've been watching miracles mm. i know what's going to happen and i i've got three grown-up daughters and last thursday the, my second daughter came here, so in this short space of time, each one of them have come. Wow. They were a bit like, like, what's going on? Like, because they're so used to dysfunction and, you know, inconsistency and insecurity mm. that they're quite kind of a bit like, and, and I guess that's why they were laughing, because they're nervous and not sure. Yeah. And, and just now, now, like, we just spend time together, we eat together, we laugh, I look after the kids. And, and a lot of times I have to say no because they've seen someone really kind <laughs> now. <laughs> 
That's amazing. Well, uh, tonight we're going to have food from uh, your chef and my mate, Josh. And I'm very, very nervous because he's an awful cook. He won't be allowed to touch the food. Okay, Gary cool. is very, very strict on Thank that. God for that. <laughs> oh, here he is. Here he is. Yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah. going to kitchen this all the time. <laughs> Over 100 guests come through the doors every Saturday evening for a hot meal and to spend time in a safe space. Thanks, guys. Nice to see you. Amazing, hey? It was great, man. I can't believe, I honestly can't believe so many people come. I, I couldn't work out if I should be inspired and like encouraged that this church should, are reaching that many people mm. or like heartbroken because there is such a need yeah. in this city. I couldn't believe it. It is a bit of a bittersweet thing. Mm. Um, Did you meet anyone in here tonight? Yeah, I met a great guy, man, who's, you know, starting to come off drugs, found out about this place last week. And the thing I love about him is this place gives him his dignity. Do you know what I mean? And he's talking about his dreams and his hopes and the future. And he might be in a really dire situation, but he's, he's looking up, which I think is everything, you know? How about you? Yeah, some great guys. Just um, found this, I've been in Brighton his whole life, just part of the, the, commu like the street community and, and the community here. Um, but yeah, just amazing story, just comes here for the people, for the food, for the, yeah. you know, to feel part of something. I think he said that's what, that's what makes him feel better. Yeah. Is that he, he doesn't get ignored, he doesn't get, you know, walked past as if he's not there. That actually, that really speaks to me because it's so easy to become desensitized to when you walk past someone in the street, but actually you've got to remind yourself that, that that's a human being, yeah. you know, with a life yeah. and they deserve dignity. They deserve to be known, they deserve to be seen. And so, yeah, it's really inspired me, man. Yeah, I spoke to someone earlier who said the difficulty of being homeless is that people look at you as if you're see-through. Mm. It's like... Yeah, that'll probably be my takeaway, like, try your best to see people, man. Mm. Like, try your best to see everyone. I mean... Yeah. Shout out to these guys at St Peter's doing what they're doing. Yeah, big Amazing. Ups. When we think about all the problems we're facing in our country today, it can feel overwhelming. Sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. So many people are struggling to get by and it can feel like things are only getting worse. But what I've seen today has given me hope. Hope that it's not too late to do something. Hope that every one of us can play our part in making the world a better place. And hope that the church, Christianity and faith are alive and making a real difference in people's lives. Showing the love of God in practical, caring ways. It's a wake up call to all of us with faith or without to look around us, see the need, and ask ourselves, how can we help? <laughs>